Hello and welcome to another tutorial by KH Web Development. Today I'm going to be showing you how to download, and install, and use the OpenSSH client for your Windows command prompt. First, what you're going to want to do is open up your web browser and go to sourceforge.net. Alright, so once SourceForge is open, you're going to see a search box here in the middle of the screen. Right here. And you're going to want to type in open SSH space Windows. Open SSH needs to be one word. You can see open SSH in a space. Or you'll get the uh, you'll get different search results. So we'll hit enter and when the search comes up, you're going to want to click the first link, open SSH for Windows. And that'll open up all the results that go with open SSH for Windows. Now I'll click download here. And you're going to be given three options. Um, you're going to want to choose the SSH Windows installer. Come over here to the right and click download. And it will show you the files in the, the download. So go ahead and click on the, the zip file. The setup SSH does it. Go ahead and make sure it allows the download. Go ahead and open it. Uh, there's no need to save it unless you're planning on uninstalling and reinstalling a hundred times. Alright, so once it's downloaded, it'll come up in uh, whatever you use to handle your zip folders. I use uh, WinRAR. It's a very uh, useful tool. It helps manage your archives. Um, and you're going to want to extract and run the setup ssh.exe file. Um, Alright, I, this is just saying that I already have ssh installed. Uh, it's going to come up and it's going to say the, the you know the basic welcome to open SSH and give you some uh, some information. Click next to continue. So click next. Going to have to go over and accept the terms of the license agreement. Click next again. All right, now you're going to come up on the menu that has three different checkboxes: the client, the server, and the start menu shortcuts. The only one you need to use your command prompt is the client. Uh, so you can go ahead and uncheck the other two. And then, so make sure you have client checked and shared tools. Um, and then click next. This is going to show your destination folder. You can install it anywhere. So, uh, yeah, the, the default is fine. Program file slash open SSH. That's fine. Come down here, click next. Now it's going to ask you for your start menu folder. Even if you chose to not install the start menu shortcuts, don't worry about it. If you didn't, just click install. If you did, um, you can go in and choose what folder on your start menu you want to install in. Alright, so now that it's finished installing, it's real quick install. Uh, click finish, and it's installed. So now, Go ahead and minimize all that stuff. And you're going to want to open up a command prompt. You do this, you, uh, you can go. See, I, I have a button for it already, but uh, to use it in XP, you can go start menu, click on run, and then type in CMD. Um, in Vista, however, you could go all programs, accessories. And then command prompt. It's going to be right there. So click on that and it comes up. Now, the SSH command is very simple. It's just SSH. So type in SSH and then you're going to need to specify your, your server username. Um, yeah, so your server username at your server address.
that's the basic uh, SSH command. So, now in my case, my username is khwd. So I type in SSH khwd. Now, my uh, server address is going to be different than uh, the normal because I'm inside the same firewall my server is. So, to find that out, if you're on Windows, you're going to need to open up another command prompt. Um, and so when, yeah, open up another command prompt. And then when that comes up, type in ipconfig, one word, ipconfig. And you're going to want to look at ipv4 address. And that's going to be your local area network address. Uh, now, however, because this is not my server computer, it's a little different. Um, you're going to need to do this on your server. Um, if you're running uh, Linux, it's you open up your, you go to your command line and then type in if config. So my server IP is 192.168.1.73. Go ahead type in and you see I've got SSH, my server username, and then my server address. So once you type that in, hit enter. Again, that's uh, it's SSH username, server username at server address. Now when you hit enter for the first time, going to spit out some gibberish about the authenticity of the host can't be established. Um, this is fine. You can go ahead and type in yes. Uh, just go over here type in yes. You have to type in yes or it'll spit out an error. Now it's going to ask you for your username password for the server. As you can see it gives you the same thing that was mentioned in your SSH command. So type in your password and hit enter. Uh, if you don't know what your password is, talk to your system administrator. Uh, or if you are the system administrator, it's just the password you used when you set up your server. So go ahead and type it in and hit enter. Alright, and then after you're done typing it in, it's going to spit out a welcome message, if you would like to call it that. It just gives you some basic information about the server. Um, it was copyrighted. Uh, it's mostly just gibberish. Um, and then it's going to give you the help address for the for their help website. In my case, it's help.ubuntu.com because I'm using the Ubuntu Server Edition. So now you're logged into your server. Um, and now once you're inside, you can create files, uh, create shell commands, edit configuration, uh, anything you need to do to work on your server remotely. That's what SSH does. So thank you for watching. Uh, please subscribe to these KH Web Development videos. There will be many more to come. Again, thank you for watching.